Every state has had tornadoes in the United States, all right? Uh, and in the United States, we have about 1,300 of them a year, as I talked about with you the other day. But there are key things that set up within this alley on a very frequent basis that give us a chance for tornadoes. They are instability and heat, and deep layer shear, or change in wind direction with height, environmental shear. Let's talk about this. The warm, moist air comes in off the Gulf of Mexico. This is a typical springtime setup for a plains outbreak. Okay, that's the example we're going to use here. And you can see all that moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. It is a steady feed. As a matter of fact, it's very similar to what we're going to have this weekend. Warm, hot, even, even hot, dry air comes in off the desert southwest and meets up with that almost on a daily basis. So you wind up with this feature we call a dry line. That allows the air to converge at the surface and rise, and boom, all of a sudden you've got thunderstorms. But one of the keys to the whole thing is changing that wind direction with height. And to get that, we've got an upper level trough. The cold air loft also helps with the instability, but it more importantly, changes the wind direction with height. You can really see that. Notice the scissoring effect that's going on there between the low level uh, winds and the upper level winds in through here. And we're talking about a 30,000 uh, foot chunk of atmosphere. So let's look at this a little bit closer here. We want to kind of dive in to the clouds and take a little bit closer look at this. Uh, when the atmosphere sets up like this, as it often does certainly in the spring, this is what it looks like from a three-dimensional three image. You've got this horizontal roll. You see Greg Forbes oftentimes take a pencil and roll it across his hand, all right? This is this environmental shear that exists. But how do you get that up into the vertical? Well, clouds develop, thunderstorms form, cumulonimbus clouds, and now you've tilted that rotation. And that is not the rotation that produces the tornado. There are other properties, as we talked about, like the rear flank downdraft that actually gets you the tornado. But you have to have that initial supercell, that rotating large mesocyclone, to at least give you a chance, or most of the times give you a chance for a tornado.